Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Digital Artcast. Um, we are now rounding out the year. Um, it's getting close to the end. Um, thank God. I know for some people, uh, this piece of shit year couldn't get any worse. Um, so I'm hoping that, you know, looking towards the future and next year, there's going to be some positive things coming. Um, and of course, you know, like I hope and say every episode that this podcast and my little slice of the internet is helping you guys get through whatever you're getting through. Um, hopefully you're focusing on a project or you're building yourself up in some respects with a new skill set. You know, I think with the walls closing in and the way COVID's hit us all, um, it has been a time for self-improvement. Um, and again, I think, you know, I'm quite uh, humbled by the fact that a lot of people message me and say that the podcast is definitely keeping them going. Um, so I want to do something very special uh, towards the end of the year and get on... Um, probably the biggest guest i've had on my podcast um we've definitely spoke to some you know top tier artists um but then i think this particular um person that i've had on or are going to have on just now is one that has been probably my most requested um guest and someone that um i think just i personally have wanted to speak to on a, a level from artist to artist because uh there's definitely a, a, an indication you can get from someone about how they are from you know watching an interview but having an actual conversation um is a whole different thing so yeah so today we are talking to um someone who i think is um i don't want to use the word legend you know i don't know if i don't want to maybe uh you know make him feel uncomfortable in that sense but i definitely feel like some of the things he's worked on the projects especially have been legendary so um if you can please please help me and welcome him along today's guest uh mr Maché Kutiara. Hey, Maché. Hey, howdy. Hello. Um, yeah, wow. Thanks for coming on and, and speaking to us. Um, I'm definitely humbled and very honoured to have you here. Um, it's been a, a long time in the making, but uh, yeah, we've uh, we've eventually got here. Um, thank God. Um, <laughs> what an intro, but, though. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I know. Oh, no, <laughs> man. Like, uh, I, definitely, I definitely have to get people to... Uh, to the high standard they're regarded and i think like you said you know we're talking just before we rolled but you know you're like i don't feel like i'm doing a lot or i think it's like it's almost the imposter syndrome in a way right you always constantly feel like ah, you know my stuff's not that good i'm not you know you're always kind of uh self-deprecating as artists um but then from the outside looking in you know we understand that you know um you've done a lot in the time you've worked in the industry there's a lot of things you've left your your fingerprints on that have become you know massive projects i mean even way back when you were working on like crisis for god's sake i mean you know it's like you know that was a big thing even then but then you know right you know coming to america working on last of us and then almost instantaneously bang you're into the film industry you know you're working on massive projects there um you know stuff even stuff like ghost in the shell when that dropped and you know you and ash and a couple other really big artists were working on that um and then of course you're heavy into marvel so you're in you know avengers um you know even most recently you know yeah, stuff like jungle cruise or you know wonder woman um and of course now you know stuff that's in kind of pre-production which is like guardians 3 you know thor um there's so much going on right there's so many things i think in the space of what 15 ish years um that you've kind of just you've you've managed to land on these massive projects um and i don't think by luck right you know you you've got to have some kind of talent to be noticed by, you know, especially the American market. Cause it is so, um, right. There's so much going on there. Right. And especially coming from this side of the pond where we are in Europe, you know, like you don't get that plane ride unless you kind of know what you're doing. Right. You, you have to be doing something that is competent in a sense. I mean, has it, have you ever looked back and reflected, especially since 2020 hit, you know, and that was kind of that end of decade thing. Did you look back and think, you know, look how far i've come has that ever kind of landed on you uh sometimes i actually meant to ask you how how are you enjoying 2020 so far <laughs> <laughs> fucking I, sucks I, man i, I oh. thought it was a good year what, what are you talking yeah. about <laughs> yeah i know jesus i mean i just want to think the end at this point it's like it's oh, the walls are closing crazy. in and oh, it's a pretty man, crazy year but i'll be honest I mean, with you I, i'm yeah. i'm <clears throat> personally honestly i there is just it's a mix it's a mixed bag because Mm. This year was kind of, kind of interesting. Like, uh, 
albeit everything going on uh, in the world right now, from like yeah. professional level, it was really good for me. You know, like right. I've managed to get some of the projects that I always wanted to get done on the personal mm-hmm. level, and yeah, uh, and succeeded. I found you know different passion here and there, uh, different callings and like personal sort of like discoveries as well, which I felt mm-hmm. were something that I was missing for many, many years and like a lot of self-reflection and maybe it's because, and it's not even because, you know, I had more, more personal time. I was actually mm. more busy than I wish I were. Right. I was kind of like, it kind of sounds weird, but I was really hoping to get some time off when everything mm. was going on with, you know, pandemic and whatnot, but yeah, yeah, I was yeah. lucky enough not to, which is, mm. I'm thankful for, but on the other hand, I was kind of, I was kind of like, ah, God damn it. Yeah. I wish I had that personal time to like contemplate and think. But then yeah. on the other hand, I found, you know, uh, I, I started mountain biking, for instance, uh, this summer. And okay. mm-hmm. just just by virtue of being out, out there mm-hmm. so much, because I, mm-hmm. I think I've spent easily like a couple of hours a week, if not more in the mountains, you know, and, uh, just, just biking and, 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 you know, exploring terrain and and going on trails and that by, by virtue of being there, like you're, you know, obviously you see hikers and other bikers and whatnot, but for the most part, you're alone with yourself Mm -hmm. and with your thoughts, you know, obviously if I ride with friends, that's a, that's a different thing, but, uh, it makes you want to like enjoy nature and think about your life a lot. You know, that's something I found, uh, like a like a wholesomeness of it almost <laughs> yeah i mean like in essence i think it's we take that for granted in scotland because we have so much beautiful lost countryside where you can kind of get lost for hours um yeah but i always yeah, feel yeah. like I was even when i was in say. la like, yeah like even when i was uh was in la last year for lightbox you know i was stunned about you know how much the city you know kind of towers over you um and also just the disparity between wealth and poorness like it was crazy as well um and it's it's uh it's something I think I see more because, you know, I'm in Scotland, but even our homeless situation, right, isn't that bad in all our city centres. And we're Glasgow's one of the, you know, the, the poorest cities in the in the world at this point. Most especially Europe. I mean, I think it definitely is. But um but yeah, like I think if you can get out to nature more and walk away from the city, it definitely does revitalize you. And I mean, it's still got to be crazy. <clears throat> To you, but I mean, even especially to me, moving from somewhere like like a small town here in, in Falkirk, probably similar coming from Poland, where like you know, LA is like it never shuts up, right? It's constantly shouting at you, even for the the minute you land. But then, is that has that noise dulled in the background over the years? Do you feel it anymore? I moved out from LA for that reason. It's just it's right. it's an insane city, and this year kind of exposed to me personally how insane the city is. And how fragile everything is. Like, mm. you know, one of the things that when you when you get to LA, uh, at least that was true when I got there, uh, you know, some years ago now, was that there's just so many opportunities, you know, for mm. you to grab, and you just have to be hustling to make them happen. And uh, that that was something that I always admired about the city. Like, there's just the vibe of making stuff happen, you know. Yeah, like everywhere you would go in the city, that would be pretty much like the prevailing vibe, especially yeah. with, when you meet with other other creatives and other artists and mm. uh, people working in the industry. There was always this sort of notion like I'm making something happen, you know, and that kind of yeah, got yeah, yeah. you to that dance of like, I want to make something happen, too, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, like working well, on your own shows and your own animations and. Yeah. yeah 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 but but then also like the tax that comes with it is just you're living in like a crazy um beehive almost of of humans you know right you're yeah. just constantly in traffic everything costs fortune uh mm-hmm. the quality of living living is like unless you're rich then yeah it yeah. could be good but otherwise it's just like really i'm paying so much for this you know yeah, yeah, yeah and now it's just you mentioned homelessness you should you should come to la dude <laughs> like right now you would be <laughs> where am i like what the yeah, fuck yeah, yeah. going on it's crazy it's it's absolutely yeah. insane 
And yeah. uh, you know, I'm 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 a dad right now. Like I've been dad for dad for a few years. I have a daughter. Yep. Uh, mm-hmm. I've mentioned this many times. And it's yeah. just, you know, at this point is for 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 me and my family it was just not a healthy place to be at all. Yeah. And we kind of had that epiphany for for many years. Uh, mm. but nowhere near as uh intense of a feeling to get the hell out as this year, you know. Mm. And um, I mean, yeah. I was just going to say like it for me especially, I think, you know, you know, I was walking about Riot Games and walking about Blizzard and you know, got to tour a couple of studios when I was out there, and I thought, oh, you know, this is really cool. I mean, I mean, Riot especially seemed like an absolute dreamland, like the mecca for artists. But you know, yeah, it's a pretty, was, pretty insane campus that they have there. Yeah, it is actually mental. But uh, because I was out there visiting some of my friends on the Valorant team, and uh, like, I mean, it's awesome. But then you know, when you look at the future, because I'm, I mean, I'm 35 now, so I was an engineer in the railway industry till 28, mm-hmm. and then I left to chase my dream, quote unquote. Um, and, uh, you know, now that I'm a bit older, things like, you know, kids are coming up and, you know, what am I going to do and where am I going to live in the next couple of years? And, you know, stuff like, I mean, even just simple stuff like guns, healthcare, kids, like it does make you think about well, where do I feel safest in the world? Where do I want to be, you know, for that future to happen? And uh, like so I was going to say, you know, especially in Europe, because we have stuff like, you know, free universal healthcare and, you know, our gun laws have been in place for a long, long time. So we don't have any of that um although we have to put up with it you know the tory part in in london but you know in general it's a pretty safe place to live like in and but then i think for me as an outsider right i only see the tv version of america right yeah so, yeah i know, was about to guns, say <laughs> gun, gun, guns everywhere everybody's dying in the street but like uh is it something that you you, you feel watch like, too much tv like, dude <laughs> yeah, yeah i mean it probably is like yeah i mean you you live there right honestly so you can tell me how you feel about the city do you feel it's somewhere you could still be for a while and could live there you know i mentioned this uh before the call like the grass is always greener on the other side and you know i right, think that right. the, the it's kind of crazy because like anyone i talk with like any europeans friends and i i was in the same place as you were like uh of course. until i i were here in america living in america my notion of what America is was like completely different. It was just movie based, right. basically. So yeah. I would just have an assumption it's like, oh, I saw this in the movie. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger's of... the governor. What the fuck's happening? <laughs> <laughs> I actually saw yeah. him on the bike one day uh, in, in oh, Santa really? Monica. Yeah, he was just strolling through the Santa Monica, but that was like a few years ago. Yeah, uh, he, I, he I actually saw him in there. Edinburgh as well. He was psychoing in Edinburgh at one point, smoking. Oh, there you uh, go. I think he was, yeah, he was like cutting um, about so. But yeah, like it's that. like, yeah. you know, I've, I've, I think I talked about it too, like before mm-hmm. on my podcast mm-hmm. that moving to America was such a culture shock because like, you know, you, you consider USA as a fir- first, for quote unquote, first world country, like with yes. most European countries as well. Right. So let's say developed, you know, Western country and, uh, but they could, America could not be more different than you think than anything mm-hmm. else you would see in Europe. I mean, you, you you get cars, you get this, you get that, like you get like the basic yeah, yeah. needs. All of those mm-hmm. things are there. But yeah. there's just like so many small things that hit you from from like, you know, from a uh, surprise point where it's like, wait, like this is how it is here, you know? Right. <laughs> like yeah. you just learn those little things and you realize how different the life is. Yeah, um, I mean, but it's also I think mm-hmm. LA specifically, you know, like for the people who live in LA and only lived in LA, it's such a bubble. It's it's a giant bubble of bullshit, in my opinion. Like at least <laughs> you know that's something I've kind of realized over years. Yeah, the moment you get outside of the city to the countryside, like the life is so different, like so different, yeah. and. Yeah. Um, yeah, everybody yeah, keeps know. talking about that place in Nelly called uh, Joshua Tree. Like, they were always saying you really have to go and look at it. It's supposed to be, like, one of the funkiest places um, in California place. to visit. It's, it's a nice spot. It's pretty close to L.A. Like, it's a, it's right. a small – I would say it's a pretty small park. Um, I haven't been in Joshua Tree in, like, years, actually. So, I don't know how it – I mean, it's, it wouldn't yeah. change much. I mean, it's, it's a natural yeah, – yeah. Something it, to do with crazy kind of park? tree colors and sand. And, yeah, it's like a – Well, you have those like – you have those big giant boulders in the middle of a desert and uh, Joshua right. trees, right? So that's ah, like okay, why it's called Joshua tree. You have those tree, you know, yeah. weird looking yeah. trees, but there are a bunch yeah. of places like that in California. You know, it was the thing about California uh, for people who love it and hate it, uh, it's yeah. it's one of the states where it, it just has so many natural 
monuments that are just absolutely insane. I, I feel like anyone who goes to uh, US and wants to visit mm-hmm. California, they should buy f- any stretch of imagination, avoid LA and go right. to places like Yosemite or uh, uh, okay. Sequoia or, you know, mm. the, the Death Valley, right? Those places right. where you just like, what the hell? Or Mojave, right? Those those big, big parks that are just so in in terms of scale and right and beauty, they're just insane. And everything is sort of like hours away from you. You know, that's the the craziest yeah. part. Like, there's just so many places that have completely different landscape and vibe, and they are literally hours away. I think that's what makes California special. But yeah, um, yeah. to your point, you you mentioned you know the the stuff about you know being on the countryside and and seeing mm-hmm. you know seeing the life of americans in like <laughs> yeah. in the tv form you know i had yeah, this, yeah. i had this epiphany myself where i would look at uh you know how my life is and like kind of a craving to that you know all good old times when i was when i was a kid i would visit my mm. grandparents on the countryside in poland and the right. life was just slow and you would just you know live by a day and sort of like not worry about the future and mm. there's something about that there's definitely something about not being in the city and i, I guess yeah. it just depends on like who are you personally like what yeah. what your goals are and what do you like mm. i know some people that love being in the buzz you know they just yeah. love being in this you know right in the middle of everything no no mm-hmm. quietness just go 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 they just love being in that vibe and they just wither yeah. when they are not in it yeah. um but i i think i had this year like my self discovery where to me it's like i think i'm starting to get a co- completely opposite and i want to have a mm. quiet time and and not be yeah. in the middle of everything you know yeah, especially when you've got kids and family to deal with. Like, you know, there's enough chaos in your house. You don't want that outside your door as well, right? You want some kind of semblance of being able to escape to a place where there is quiet, where there is rest, where there's time to reflect on your thoughts and, like you said, go cycling or walking or yeah, you know, something. Just have time something for where you can switch in off. general. You're not yeah, working okay. to pay bills all the time, you know? Yeah, well, you came off Facebook recently as well, right? You made the announcement. You were like, I'm just, I'm basically just, not going to be here anymore really i'm just going to kind of bounce not only and... facebook tw- i completely deleted twitter twitter i think that's just a giant cesspool of shit <laughs> uh yeah yeah it's weird though because people are always like oh yeah man for like art especially like twitter seems to be the place but then i don't know if it's because i'm out of touch now because i'm in my 30s but i'm kind of like oh, i thought instagram was like still the hookup for you know posting stuff but then I don't know much about Twitter as well. So, I mean, I came from the Facebook. I mean, I I came from the MySpace generation. It's a fucking old arm. But like, uh, but yeah, like, yeah, man, like it's, it's crazy now to think, you know, Machi, I was, when I was first starting to draw before I left my job, I was ordering no one DVDs (laughs) to my house. That's that's how Yeah, I'm that old as well. Yeah. 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 Like it's crazy. So, I mean, like, you know, when you see a lot of people now that are, are waking up to want to do concept art now and like, you know, the internet's on your doorstep, it's, almost pretty overwhelming book. actually yeah i mean when i left my job in 2012 like art station wasn't even a thing you know what i mean yeah, like yeah, that's yeah i had to, i had to i had to physically google concept art and find somebody that i thought looked good and then send them an email and wait for like six months for it to get back to me when it was free i mean like that's now the polar opposite right where it's almost instantaneous because you have guys, you know, almost on hand to deal with requests or like give people feedback. And, you know, that's almost what I think was now diving into the art side of it. Like learn squared has exploded, you know, and you know, that's one of the main places people now go to get education and then the entertainment industry, um, apart from, you know, CGMA and, you know, Nomon and other places, but, uh, does it kind of freak you out now looking at the landscape and thinking like how much it has changed since you started teaching yourself? Yeah. Yeah. It changed. It changed a lot. I mean, I remember when ZBrush was not a thing where it was like a two and a half D, you yeah. know, weird canvas, 3D canvas painting. Dynamesh cool. wasn't even a thing yet. I mean, yeah, no, like, I mean, forget about Dynamesh. Yeah. I'm, I'm not, I'm talking yeah. about the time where it was not even a 3D tool for sculpting. Oh, you know? yeah, it of was course. It's a weird, it's weird <laughs> two and a half D yeah. weird thing. I remember yeah. when it, came, it came out when I was at Crytek and uh, everyone was like, what the hell is this? You know, like, 
how would you even want to use that? That makes no sense. And then like a few years later, it's like everyone's sculpting in it and, and, and you know, and, and making sculptures for, for film and video games, all that stuff. So it's like, okay, cool. Yeah. Interesting. So yeah. definitely, you know, the landscape has been changing all the time and yeah, it's kind of crazy how fast things go. You mentioned that, you know, everything is sort of like on the fingertips right now and it's yeah. great, but it's also like overwhelming. I feel, I feel like oh, yeah. we're in a, we're in a, we're in a times where when you want to learn anything, it's just, you know, it's, it's, a. Uh, it's hard. It's hard for someone who doesn't know how to curate and find the right yeah. uh, source material. You know, I, I feel yeah. like that's the biggest issue. Cause like you, mm. you know, if you get those quotes, you go on Instagram and everyone, every now and then in the feed, you get like this weird inspirational quotes you didn't ask for. <laughs> and, <laughs> and why it's like from Elon Musk's like, Oh, you, you know, uh, yeah. everything is free on the internet. It's like, it's true. You can learn pretty much yeah. any craft and, and literally mm. get, into like phd level just from internet i mean i think stanford oh, and and harvard they they do have some of the classes like completely free online like obviously after mm. like some of the recordings of their classes basically right and mm. the lectures they they have that free online and it's wow. crazy like you can learn about you know nuclear physics and, and you know, crazy stuff that you would normally have to go to university and pay a lot of money like you still have to do that to to, to earn the phd but you can yeah. find that material online for free. The problem mm. is, the biggest problem, and that's the big one in 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 arts world, because I, I mean we live in that world, so this is the the world we're familiar with, mm. is that you you turn on a video on YouTube, and for first five minutes you watch a face talking to you about random shit you don't want to hear about, and then they do something you want to learn about, and then how do you know if they're doing it in the right way or if oh, they're yeah. just like assuming that that's the right way to do you know or, and to go because you know like when you do complex things with 3d or you know animation or vfx yeah. there's just multiple ways of approaching the the the, the problem and with, with the different software and all and all that kind of stuff yeah. and it's very easy to get lost it's like am i using the right software to begin with for this is there oh, a better yeah. solution out there am i approaching yeah. the problem from the right point of view yeah. like you will not get that answer unless you get someone who's absolutely at the top of the of the food chain when it comes to art to tell you yeah. that and here's another problem a lot of like absolutely amazing artists they just don't want to teach they just don't want to yeah. teach because like I, I this is something i found and it's kind of fascinating it's like the the better the artist the less likely they're going to teach <laughs> mm. you know it's kind of yeah. funny um, yeah. but I, I, I or do don't make good teachers that. also like not not every artist can be a good oh teacher yeah of also. course that's also a thing yeah yeah exactly and there are some teachers that are not necessarily the great artists but they are mm. amazing at teaching you know teaching. yep yeah and uh they know how to explain the subject maybe the result's not going to be you know it's not going to be your next greg mullings painting but mm. it's absolutely going to explain everything you need to know about how to get to that point you know yeah. um versus you know i've seen yeah. some of one like some of my favorite artists do tutorials and they just it's like i don't know if i learned anything you know yeah oh, and there God, you would watch a video on on youtube that a person is yeah. trying to do something it doesn't look that great but yeah he makes the point across and then you can use it for mm. your own good and you see like okay that's pretty powerful you know so it's kind of it's kind of wild out there and you know, yeah. um, I get it though. You know, like even mm. from a personal level, I teaching is incredibly taxing and difficult. You know, it yes. just takes so much energy because, like, you have to rethink mm -hmm. if you want to teach correctly and get your point across. Like, you have to almost like teach yourself how to do that, and you realize down the road is that. Oh, in order to explain the subject, I actually have to like educate myself how I got to that point in my fa past 15 years that I just mm. took for granted, you know, and just, yeah, that's, that's, that is not an easy task. <laughs> it's just, I think an unbelievable landscape of so much, like, you know, just things shouting in your face for your attention constantly. And 
you know, one of my friends who works in Glasgow, um, you know, probably an artist that, you know, not a lot of people know about, but he's worked on some of these massive projects for films, but he almost, in a sense, like he's aware of the internet and knows like, you know, like online courses, but Mm -hmm. he sits just constantly every day with a sketchbook and a pencil. That's his medium. You know, he can do stuff digitally, he uses Procreate, but like his idea was like, I'm not going to watch a bunch of tutorials and get lost. Like he just sat every day with a pencil and done constant life study drawings, life drawing, you know, still life, just absolutely honing that skill. Almost like a, you know, like a Kim Jong-ji level of like, you know, I'm just going to do one thing, but do it fucking really well. And like, that's what will get me hired. And that's almost something that I was trying to explain to a bunch of students at my university, you know, not long ago, I'm kind of teaching and like having like a small feedback session for some of the guys that I used to teach at university. But um, I'm almost, you know, they always come to me like, oh, you know, to be a concept artist, I need to know ZBrush, Cinema 4D, V-Ray, uh, Blender now, I need to know how to photo bash, you know, color. And then I try to nail into them like, look, just focus on drawing and painting and you'll get halfway there. Like you'll almost get 90% of the way there. If you just have a really core foundation, then you worry about, you know, the tips and tricks and things that will make you super fast, you know, like, cause I believe, I mean, this is just me personally, but I believe that like drawn is the foundation almost to everything you'll do in the entertainment industry. Like if you yeah, can hold a pencil helps, and get an sure. idea across. Yeah. I mean, like I'm not saying it's like the B and end but I feel like if you've got a solid drawn foundation, it will open more doors than it will close, if you know what I mean. Yeah, it's I mean, some of, those, of my yeah. favorite directors do their own storyboards, you know, that that tells you well, a lot. Well, yeah, Ridley and guys like that, you know, they were drawing their storyboards well before they were filming stuff. And, uh, you know, it's like, even Cameron, I mean, like, he's famous for a lot of the stuff he was yeah. drawing early on. So, like I said, I think if you can get across a point with a pencil on a bit of paper you're 90 percent of the way there right that's yeah that's it's definitely the, the quickest way to show what you need to show you know like it, yeah you can open up a computer and start you know bashing photo bashing or you know kid bashing 3d and, or yeah and, and and trying to design things but nothing is faster than just sketching and doodling even if it looks like crap you, you're still gonna get the point across 100 percent. what do you yeah. want to show and then eventually you can you know refine that you know, the beauty Expanded of, of it, yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think yeah. the beauty of today is the fact that you can kind of choose who you want to be in this industry almost, you know, obviously mm. there, are, there are trends and things that will get you more likely hired. Um, mm. But also it doesn't necessarily mean that you need to be hired to make a living either. Mm. There's so many yes. good examples of that already, like how social media you know, basically becomes this platform where now because of your presence and the amount of people that follow you, you can mm. actually make a living doing your own, doing your own thing, which is something I, I do, you know, coming back to social media, I, I think that's mm-hmm. that's one of the reasons to sort of like keep your presence in there. But I would say yeah. that's the the one and, all, and the sole reason to do that. Um, I, I don't consider social media as a platform to communicate with people unless it's, you know, talking with uh, with people that follow my work um, mm. and just giving a reply here and there. Um, but honestly, it's not a platform to make friends at all. You know, you asked like mm. uh, about Twitter, like in the one of the reasons I deleted Twitter is just like I looked at uh, almost like the return of investment. Like how much time mm. I need to spend to post and cater to, uh, and also it's just it, it just became absolutely frustrating because I would follow artists uh, that I like, but I would be battered with political shit that I'm not interested with, you know, like a suggestion <sighs> yeah. from this and suggestion from that. It's like I don't want to I don't want to look at that. Like this is not what I yeah. you know this is not what I want to look at, and. Just, you know, I never found like except of with acceptance of uh, of Instagram, which is I feel like the only plat the only social media platform right now that is purely like art art focused in a way, like mm. or, or art enabling, let's put mm-hmm. it this way, because all it's all image based, right? Yeah. Like people almost don't read. Like they just look at the image. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and they like literally uh, don't read because you post like, yeah, like I made this in Unreal and the first first post is like, uh, is it real? 
<laughs> okay <laughs> you don't read cool oh man um, it's like even with twitter like it's the trolls as well right or just the people who are like 10 years old with an account i mean like the funniest thing like um i mean you know raf like raf exists and you know raf like i mean where he was like posting some of his uh, street fighter characters or like the x-men stuff he was doing and like every third comment was like yeah man good job keep going <laughs> And you're like, it's a fucking more. director at Sony for fuck's sake! Like, what the hell? <laughs> He's like <laughs> pissing himself laughing. Like, it's it's crazy to me some some of the responses you get with people who just like are there to argue and nothing else. And it's like you know, it's and I feel sometimes like it's you don't want to respond. You like you're never supposed to look at the comments, right? But you just can't help yourself sometimes. Like you just are like, oh, what is some dickhead saying to me? Yeah, like, just be religious about it though. Like if you read comments, yeah, I mean. I read comments, but I don't like. I read, but I don't read. Let's put it this way, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I read comments to see if there is any question that I feel like okay, this is a legit question I could answer to give some information back, like some actual knowledge back. But if, yeah. if there's a if there's a comment like, oh, it looks like it looks like X, Y, and Z, or did you use this brush or that? It's like I don't answer oh, those yeah. questions because a. I don't want to be rude because like it's, mm-hmm. you, I usually post what I did in my description. So if you read the description, you know exactly what you're looking at. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't want to be rude to reply and be an asshole. Uh, it's just not in my nature. But also it's just like one bad comment, like one person who's just being a, a, a troll or a, or a vile mm. person or just a jealous person or whatever. Like even yeah, or, yeah, yeah. or a person that has a bad day and just wants to like unload on you specifically. Right. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. that happens too. Like one person will ruin your day. Like you can get a, you can get a hundreds of positive comments of, of or, or people like saying thank you or sharing love or like, wow, this is awesome. Like uh, yeah. it's inspiring, whatever. And then one person says like, it looks like shit. I hate you. <laughs> it's like <and> that kind of <laughs> lingers, even though it's just yeah. the one person out of like thousands that, you know, appreciate what you do. Um, yeah. And, you know, here's another part of, on this, like, mm-hmm. I feel like for the longest part, everyone was a victim of not only everyone. I'm I'm generalizing, obviously, right? But but yeah, let's yeah, say yeah. generalizing, most of us fall in the, into a victim of victimhood of. I want to see how many likes this is gonna get, and if if not mm. enough, then I did something wrong, right? And it almost like falls into this sort of like self congratulatory uh, you know sort of behavior where it's like if i get a lot of likes then i win and if i don't then i lose it's like that's not the mm. point of which you, why you're doing the stuff you're doing you know unless you're literally just trying to game the social media for your um you know for your monetary gain whereas like the more likes yeah. the, the more money i make then then yeah okay that makes yeah. sense but if yeah. you're posting for likes then you're you're this is something I've noticed myself where I would s- not necessarily stress about it, but like be un- unhealthily aware about that issue. Like, okay, oh God, this post didn't make that much likes, you know, like eh, maybe people don't like it. And then you, and then you start stressing about posting stuff that people may like or doing stuff that people may like instead of doing stuff that inspires you specifically, you know? yeah and so if you're doing that for the wrong reasons then you're gonna feel unhappy for sure yeah and yeah. uh that's definitely i i something i've noticed where it's like you post something you you, you make something you really you really wanted to make and people really like it right and then you find yourself like oh i need to make another one of those even though you don't really want to do it you know just yeah. because like somewhere in the back of your head is like, oh, people are gonna like if I do another one of those, you know? But then you're 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 basically using your energy to do something you don't necessarily you're not necessarily inspired uh about, you know, or not necessarily yeah. excited about anymore. Mm-hmm. And it just depends. Like there are some people, like you mentioned, your friend and and you know, there there are other artists that we we really know really well that Mm-hmm. are just so insanely good at doing one thing and they just yeah. perfected it and it's just for them it's the one thing that they love doing all the time and they'll do it forever and never get bored you know yes yeah like drawing 
I love drawing. Mm -hmm. I'm going to draw until I die. And, you know, this is, yeah. and I'm going to be absolute, absolute perfectionist about it. And you, yeah. you see people like that. And it, it's, yeah, it's, it's kind of interesting because it's a completely different personality, you know? Uh, yeah. Like, I find he's myself. So switched off from, I was yeah, going to say, because he's so switched off from like the internet also, right? So he, he almost doesn't partake in that at all. Like, he just every day gets up draws for 10 hours a day and then goes to bed and, and repeats but then like obviously he's right. drawn for clients so he's doing work but like his focus was what i'm trying to get is like is social media the enemy you know is it the thing that's actually stopping people from reaching their potential because they're so focused on the noise yeah it depends on how we approach it i guess right like if you're mm. approaching it as a platform where you know it becomes almost like a discovery platform for your clients or it becomes a business platform for your business then mm. that's a one thing but if you're yeah. if you're focused on you know m focused on making something that is good for you but instead you listen to the crowd then yeah. it might not be the healthiest approach you know because yeah, yeah. you know it's like it's sometimes sometimes people are right if you're if you're too into your in your own head and you fit you think you're the, the shit but you aren't you know yeah, yeah and then you ignore what people say um hmm. you can get lost with that obviously but if you know if you if, you, if you're like if you know if you know you're good if you know what you do mm -hmm. is good and if, and, and if your instinct is telling you that what you're doing is going to benefit you in the future and you have a track record of following your heart and then benefiting from that, then you should probably continue doing that, right? <laughs> I yeah, guess that's, 100%. Uh, so it's, you know, people dem demonize and people praise the social media for being either the worst or the best thing ever. I, mm. think, it, I think it's neither. I, I don't think, right. I, I think I can agree with anyone who is saying social media is not really social. I can agree with that 100%. Yeah. Because, like, for the most part, the connections you're gonna make on social media are not going to be deep connections. For for the, I'm not saying always, but for the most part, like, see what yeah. happens. Like, do this. Like, delete, not delete. Like, even just abandon social media for a month. Yeah. And see how many of the people that talk to you on a regular basis still talk to you after oh, that. Yeah, you know, yeah. you're yeah, gonna be 100%. shocked. <laughs> yeah, not yeah, that yeah. many. Not that you try many. to tell me that I should stop talking to you, Michi. You couldn't hear from him anymore. <laughs> uh, well, I don't see. I see that the thing is, I talk with Ash on the phone. <laughs> ah, right. Okay. Old yeah. school. Yeah. The OG. Yeah. Old school. Yeah. yeah old school yeah, stuff. Man. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I have a bunch of friends, which, like, you know, I do. You asked about Facebook. I still have my personal Facebook, but it's completely blocked off. And I only use it to still sort of like talk to people that I want to talk with. Uh, right. that I, you know, haven't uh, talked with or like or ask them questions or, you know, exchange ideas about, you know, art in general, just to have right. a connection like that. But yeah. I don't use it to post or do anything uh, anymore. I do use my page, but that's mm. like connected to my Instagram. So it's like, you know, it's almost like I have one hub, which is Instagram that I use to... Mm basically have my presence out there because i that's something i don't want to do personally i feel like it's it wouldn't be a smart move for me just to completely delete myself from the internet that's not the way to right. go i just really yeah, like yeah, yeah. i'm not stupid i realize and even just from like experience like how much traction my work yeah. gets when it gets shared and what kind of projects i get out of this so so obviously yeah, yeah. i will continue doing that but mm. um but yeah, I feel I mean, like for me, it was overwhelming. For me, yeah, for me, Facebook in a way is like LinkedIn for me. Like I have like three and a half thousand friends, but like the, every single one apart from maybe like my girlfriend and my parents are all artists, are all industry people. So, you know, it, I, I scroll through it and see people posting about their work or the project they've just finished or, you know, like if I'm even occasionally because I've got, you know, I've only had 60 odd guests or something, but there's 2000 people on my Facebook. So I'll see somebody post something and be like, he would make a good guest i'll reach out to him cool right. there's another episode so like you know that's almost doing the work for me so it, i feel like that's what facebook to me is that is is the way of me reaching out to other creatives and professionals to get feedback or to obviously speak to them on the podcast so yeah i get what you mean for me like facebook i don't think even 
the younger people I know in my life who are like in their early 20s, for them, it's like Instagram, Twitter is mostly where they're kind of living or WhatsApp is exclusively and just having conversations with their friends. So it's like Facebook now is, is a total afterthought. I don't think a lot of people even really use it anymore. Um, it's yeah. shockingly one of the best advertising platforms, though from what i hear so <laughs> yeah i think if you're definitely looking for things like shops or clothing or stuff in your local area like it will help you in that respect but i don't know how good it would be for trying to sell yeah. art courses although i say that but i don't know if have you found like with learn squared that has been something that you've utilized and has seen a response that's been good well I, i'm not gonna get into the needy greedy of that but oh yeah of course I, yeah I just a generalization you, yeah i can tell you you know it's I feel like the general the general approach that I have mm -hmm. and it's changed over years. Like I remember talking about this a year ago where it's like, oh, like just keep your presence on and just, you know, post everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it it's like it changed over time where you realize, okay, there are certain platforms that work for me specifically to right. basically be there and advertise myself look at it from a perspective of business but also okay if there is any interaction that i have with the community which mm. platform allows me to have the healthiest uh interaction and to me right. specifically instagram was that thing right i uh, okay. i never like the most frustrating part uh, coming back to twitter like it's mm. just the um, the limit of words you can say it's just like okay like you cannot really go in depth into anything and you almost have to post like 10 posts to explain what you want to do and that was just such a frustrating thing that it was just like and when you post a picture that that accounts for number of words like that makes no sense mm. and if you want a hashtag then you're if you want to if you want to have a discovery then you're not having any substance in your post right if you want yeah. to have a substance, then you have no discovery. You know, it's like, how is that making any sense? And and why it's yeah. designed that way, you know? And then I, I felt like um I I I felt like I could have more meaningful conversation with people or like back and forth on platforms like Instagram or even Facebook than right. on on Twitter. I took for for me, Twitter and now with you know everything like politically going on it's just like it's just for, for me it's like a dumpster fire that i want to just stay away from <laughs> you know <laughs> um, especially especially being where you are and you know like the time it is and you know yeah we're not going to dive into that but yeah but like yeah it's going to be interesting though to be online now because that never used to be i say even pre-2000s that was never something that you had to be that was never part of your life as an artist, right? right? You made it, your it's art. a distraction too. That's I think that's the word yeah. I was seeking for last fifteen minutes. It's the giant distraction. If you're not looking yeah. at it in a healthy way, you're basically mm -hmm. distracting yourself from producing something yeah. that will meaningfully change your world. Mm. You know, because yeah. uh, I mean, talk is I cheap, even, right? I mean, like even going back to forums, I think that's something that almost should come back or be things that artists will seek rather than social right because yeah. the forums are more focused on what you want to do are people around you are the same type of people you want to be around and you know the feedback's more precise you're not getting every tom dick and harry um and i feel like I that's that definitely failed already <laughs> <sighs> yeah it's, it's difficult though because yeah how do you keep that lively and engaging with people it's um you know I, I think it's also it's try to think about you know the many people who are you know like yourself who is like you know huge in social media and you have this presence but you know there's obviously thousands of people that work in the games and film industry who don't have social media whatsoever like mm. they just get up and go to their work and come back again like i know you know there's a really interesting guy actually i know who works in the industry and he has an alias like he doesn't actually even use his real name like he just posts under uh like a like an alias just, uh, like a, a made up name almost like a like you know like sparth like you know right. but then sparse sparse name came from necessity where like nobody could pronounce his name so he basically made a username but like this guy works in the industry and has he just has his username and just works from his house so like it's like is anonymity even better than overexposure that's like and a thing you could almost dive a whole podcast into because you know how oh, much exposure certainly. do you need <laughs> yeah how much exposure do you need to make it in industry but then again that comes down to like well where do you want to work you know which studio do you want to land at then you know that's obviously varying from person to person but well 
it also comes down i mean privacy is i think it's a big thing especially yeah especially the bigger you get like the more the more people are aware of who you are the more likelihood you're gonna you're gonna stumble upon someone who's absolutely out of their mind you know right because uh, like even like statistically what was the statistics i think one per- at least one percent of of people in general are sociopath right or psy- a psychopath or a sociopath i can't remember so totally out both, of a hundred yeah, yeah. statistically out of a hundred one person is an, is absolutely out of their mind yep. you know yeah. um so especially with the many people in the world now like billions and yeah. billions of people yeah, yeah, so, yeah. yeah and obviously there's there's you know i don't i'm not a master of statistics and nor am i a scientist or a social scientist yeah, yeah, yeah. so but and so i cannot tell how much of that translates into how many of those people actually use social media all that stuff right but mm. it's for it's it's easy or it's fair to say that the more people that are aware of you, the more likelihood you're gonna find someone who's absolutely out of their mind and will go out of their way to, you know, make sure you're not feeling happy about yourself, right? So therefore, yeah. like troll comments and you know, mm. I, mean, I mean, we hear those stories of like Twitch gamers and YouTubers getting squatted. Or oh, getting yeah, death yeah. threats for no reason. It's like that just happened. That literally just happened at Ubisoft Montreal. Like somebody phoned in a fake hostage threat in the office. Yeah, and uh, there you go. That was exactly. Crazy. So I, I, Crazy I don't that, blame people yeah. who wants the privacy. You know, it's, yeah, it's yeah, yeah. absolutely crucial. I, I guess at this, because you know, I think what I've noticed over past two decades of you know almost two decades of being this in this industry in general or just like tracking mm-hmm. on how because i'm old enough to remember rotary phones you know <laughs> so same so same. um yeah. so like and and life pre-internet and like how how yeah, different yeah. it was and all those fucking things. 56k dial up modems man OG, yeah and those like, fucking weird stuff. sounds like <laughs> when it's loading <laughs> and then you want to watch the, and then you're loading a picture and like just like it almost like all those old <sighs> printers that just remember when that used to happen, line. man. Oh, I remember when that used to happen. Jesus so Christ. Yeah. I and I, I would say I'm old enough to remember, um, you know, that the life had much lower frequency in general, if that's the mm. right way to say it. Meaning, yeah, 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 you know, you would go about your your life and learn and and mm-hmm. and do things and and feel like you're always progressing. Versus now, no matter how hard you try, you're gonna find someone. Or even have a perception that the world is moving on and you're missing out, even though you're not, yeah. right? And that's one yeah, of the yeah, reasons, yeah. like, you know, the the fear of m- missing out when people like, oh, I don't, I don't know if I can take the take time off from from uh, social media. You know, it's the, the 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 best trick to do. Like I've found is just to unfollow pretty much everybody, and then you realize, oh, the world is kind of moving on, and you know, there's not much <laughs> going. On. Like when I go on Facebook. Because because I literally don't follow anyone except yeah, yeah. I think my company. You know? Right. Okay. Um, I literally is like, oh, nothing is going on in the world, so I can leave. You know? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And not, not pay attention to, and it's kind of crazy when you look at it. And like you go on Art Station, for instance, and you look at the wall of art that just almost every second is changing. Right. Like there's just so much yeah, yeah. work being posted, and you feel like, oh shit, I'm such a piece of shit. I'm not doing any work. But then you realize like, oh, wait a second. It's it's a hundred thousand people posting at the same time. So obviously it's going to feel like you're lazy. But then you go on to like each of those person uh, personal profile. And it's like, oh, they post every few months, you know. Right, so it's yeah. very difficult to like deceive yourself into thinking that you're not doing enough until yeah. you realize that, you know, maybe that's not true. Or maybe it is, you know, like if you haven't done anything in months and you're just sitting and playing games and watching movies. I mean, if you want to do that, that's fine. But then you cannot be angry that, you know, the world is moving on. But but if you're yeah. progressing and constantly, you know, making things happen on your end that you're happy with, you know, this is sort of like the trap, I would say, yeah. would be probably the best to avoid not to pay too much attention to what other people are doing just be aware of you know what's going on and how trends are moving and if those trends match towards your goals you know and then and then use that like learning new software or you know improving Mm -hmm. your skills or maybe your workflow could get 
much faster so that you have more personal time, you know? Mm. Cause that's one of the I things mean, that always yeah. frustrated me. Like when people mm. post and I, I was, I was a victim of that myself. I, I, I do that. I did that myself. Like it will be yeah, a hypocrite, yeah. not, but I've, I've did it. It's a hypocritical to say that that's a frustrating thing, but, uh, but also on the, on the other hand, this is something I realized over time is that, Mm -hmm. you know when you when you post something it's like oh i did it in like 20 minutes this sketch that looks photorealistic and everyone is jealous right (laughs) it's like how the hell did you do that and then and then you realize the client reaches out it's like oh you do 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 those sketches in 20 minutes let's do 20 for tomorrow it's like oh fuck okay i kind of fucked myself okay oh well dear yeah um um, is that a thing i mean like you know it's slightly off topic but I mean, I'm, I've never listened to a podcast, and and the podcast is, you know, you know, basically the guy who is a, a big a beginner. But you know, I felt like when I listened to it, just to try and check out what was on the, you know, the opposite end of the spectrum, where it felt like he just spent an hour complaining and about, you know, how much there is to learn. Oh my god, there's so much. There's so much. You know, like it's almost impossible to be an artist in the industry. Do you feel like it has got to a point where? there's too much to learn or do you feel like people just focus on the wrong things i i I feel like it's a skill um it's a very difficult skill to obtain and it unfortunately takes years Mm -hmm. to get a taste uh and and sense and some people get faster at it and and really really nail it pretty quickly and Mm. some people just take time and it takes a lot of uh trail and error to get to a point where you have distinguished taste towards what is important and what's good what actually facilitates for like a really good art right or or vfx or animation or whatever whatever you do right yeah yeah, yeah. it just Mm -hmm. takes a lot of time and i i feel for people right now it's something that you know is very very difficult for artists these days like because you you mentioned you know, you remember the days where you would order Nomen DVDs because there was just literally nothing else to learn from. Yes. In order to get, like, if you want to learn 3ds Max, what would you read a manual? Like <laughs> that wouldn't tell yeah. you how to do stuff. I was ordering you know? uh, David Finch's DVDs and how to draw the head. That right. Was, like, yeah. Stuff. So, yeah. so it was very difficult to come across knowledge. So you you would by 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 virtue you had to spend a lot of time investigating and finding the right resources. But because it was very difficult to get out there in terms of like who you are, only like cream, the 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 the, the creme la creme of artists would be able to get enough like publisher traction to basically have their work published and and for you to actually discover. Okay, this is like you know Ryan Church from ILM that did mm-hmm. Star Wars that is teaching me how to design vehicles. I mean, I gotta yeah. fucking watch that, all right? <laughs> of course, yeah, yeah. But now you go on YouTube, how to design vehicle, you get a million results, and which yeah, of yeah. them is good? If you don't have that yeah. taste or someone who curates that for you, it's very yeah. difficult to find something, and you're basically being overwhelmed with the amount of choices, you know. And you know, yeah, just yeah. saying that if if there's too much, like the abundance of choices makes you not choose anything, right? Like you eventually you just just. You just ex- you just get exhausted by how much stuff is out there, and it's very difficult to make a decision because then you question yourself: Did I make the right choice? Yes, you know. So I feel for people like I, you know, like I I don't know how. Like if you if someone asked me if I was to start over and learn today, where would I start? I would say I don't I have no fucking clue. <laughs> yeah, I the feel like question. it would be very difficult for me even to figure out who to learn from and what to learn because here's another thing that i've that that is i I guess someone someone who is into the subject might be missing out is that if you go on art station i'll bring up art station again like if you go on art station and, and and just close your eyes and randomly click any image like literally randomly with eyes closed click any of the images on the front page Yep. the 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 stuff you're gonna see that's gonna show up in your browser is going to be leaps and bounds better than what we would see on forums when we were learning back in 2003 and four. Yeah. In terms of quality, so and there's also this thing where 
on average, people that are not into art specifically, like who are not preview of like how VFX works or or how art is made, they will have a, a much lower bar of what uh, what is a great artwork versus someone who lives art and you've seen everything and you realize there's like there's a giant difference between the good art and the great art, right? This is something that comes with experience and taste and, you know, you have to be aware and and know what's possible. But for an average person that that, that they don't give a fuck about, you know, what tools you use, they just look at the artwork. like, oh, this looks, oh my God, this is great. For them, average image you will find on ArtStation is already past the limit of what's great. Yes. And you see that in the film industry uh, as well. You see it actually in every industry, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, Because there's not that many examples where, like, if you look at the film landscape, how many films are absolute masterpieces? Not that many. And how many of them are actually commercially successful? Even less, you know? (laughs) So clearly people don't give a fuck. They they just look at what's familiar in the first place. Therefore, so many sequels. Um and what's just easy to digest. Um yeah. and that come back think- comes back again to the frequency that I was talking about. Like back then it was yeah. there wasn't so many things going on. And now it's almost like like everything is attacking you from each side. It's like very difficult to f- to focus and figure out what do you want to do, like mm-hmm. what's good for you, what's you know, it's good for learning, and then you feel like, oh, if I commit to learning Blender, am I doing the right thing? Because their Unreal Engine is here. Uh, yeah. Or maybe yeah. I should do Maya because Maya is like better connection in VFX industry or maybe 3 d yeah. And you're like, well, what the hell? Like, what am I supposed to do, you know? So What are you supposed to do, Majid? You answer that question right now. We need to know. You're keeping a secret from us. What do we need to yeah, do? Yeah, what do you need to do? What do you need to do? Yeah. You, you see, like, I don't, I, I I know what works. There's only one thing that I found over, over 20 years that specifically for me always worked is committing to something and then like really doing it you know not talking about and just half-assing it but like really doing it you know yeah yeah, yeah. if you look down at you know what kind of art is being created out there you know obviously there are some like hot top hot topics like oh everyone's on blender or unreal engine but there's so much art that is just mind-blowing that is done in other software that you know it doesn't really matter which software you're going to use. It might matter for like productivity, I guess, at the end of yeah, the day. Yeah, yeah. I would say like, if you ask me like, should I learn 3D software? It's like, well, I think ask yourself what inspires you enough or mm. like, what are you going to be obsessed about enough so you can just basically survive the onslaught of errors, bugs, and fucking shit not working yeah, all yeah, the yeah. time. So you don't get frustrated to a point where you just abandon it, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's like even I know people who professionally do stuff for the industry and they don't even use Photoshop, right? They use Procreate and an iPad and an Apple Pencil. That's their entire pipeline. And that that's a new thing, more. by the way. But yeah, that's that's already yeah. true. Yeah. And then even looking at guys like, uh, I mean, we talked about Kim Jong-ji, but if you look at people like T.B. Choi, who have came out to LA, you know, from Korea, and you know she's just like she, her knowledge of anatomy is groundbreaking to the point where like you know characters are her thing she does them mm-hmm. super well you know it's like again specialization versus generalization right do you do a lot of things okay or do you want do one thing really well and like you said you know like the one thing you know like my friend in glasgow who you know just draws constantly in, in black and white and and he's i mean he's a storyboard artist so that kind of is part of the 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 part and partial but also does visual development but his sketches right. are so good his penmanship like his draftsmanship is so solid that he can be very versatile with that skill so if you were wanting like i say to the students i teach i'm like you know focus on drawing first and then from there you can branch out to you know paint and once you've done paint and fo- you know like it's the thing you hear in every teacher right foundations 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 it's the thing that will drive you yeah forward. yeah yeah, the tools are becoming so easy these days that it's, you know, like in order to render something realistic, it's not a, a giant feat to do that anymore. You know, it's like it's yeah, yeah okay, you used uh, real time rendering or, or non real time rendering. 
the lighting yeah. comes from pre-calculated, you know, physically accurate stuff and you get materials that are already designed for you and boom, and you have a realistic scene, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so it's not, it's not like a difficult thing to do anymore to make something that looks realistic. Um, yeah. In terms of how it renders, but to design something that looks good, you know, that's another thing. So I was going to say, I think it's, I mean, like even just speaking to guys like, you know, Robbie Johnson and Daniel Warrior when they had them on the podcast and they were talking about The Last of Us too, right? Like, you know, Mm -hmm. a lot of that stuff, you know, maybe isn't like 90% 3D, but like the 10% to make that believable and fit within that world, that's when the foundations come in, right? Like, the lighting's off like you know you look at something like lighting's off textures are off you know the shadows are wrong that's the stuff that your foundations prepare you for right because right. you know yourself when you're when you were first maybe using photo bashing was probably enough people doing that and they were doing it badly and it was easy to spot like when people were using photo textures to fill in the gaps of i don't know how to draw you know what i mean yeah yeah so, yeah, yeah yeah of course yeah you can, you can you can cheat so far but then if there's a fundamental knowledge gap you're never going to fill that with any kind of 3D. Sure. Um, you know, it's, it's always going to be the case. Even with, you know, even with Blender, people think it's like you click a button and you've instantly got a concept. Like there is an amount of work that goes into that. You know, that you have to understand. You know, even just using the right en- the render engine. You know, like people like oh, I'm using Cycles, but like, well, you really should be using Eevee. But it depends what you want, right? If you want something that's pre-rendered, you're going to need Cycles. So, you know, there is a fundamental knowledge gap you need before you can make something look believable um yeah yeah and there is also you know a question like how which of those tools are you are you using them correctly towards what you need to get and are you maybe unnecessarily adding that extra work that you don't need to add because you could achieve that by just cheating yes. cheating meaning like do i need to really design the whole environment or can i use the hdri to yeah. basically fix some of the problems that I would never focus on because they're just the background, you know? Yeah. Uh, do I need to model and make a realist, realistic texture for something that's in the background? Or can I make can I make like a approximation of a model and then just project project a photo or something that just makes yeah. it like vastly easier and faster to do? You know, like yeah. I had Ian Huber on the mm-hmm. podcast and he's you know the the blender guy the one minute tutorial ma- ma- maestro who yeah. is just basically showing like oh you can make blender look like a vfx for movie and he's just doing it at the easiest possible in the easiest possible way just yeah. cheating things that you don't need to design because he knows that that's you're never gonna it's not a video game where you have to look on the object from all the sides right Right, yeah. you're basically showing a shot, and if you can g- get away with that, then why not? So, yeah. yeah, there's definitely that. Yeah, I mean, it's production versus like the base skill because you know, I remember when Lensquare brought out the course uh, with I think it was a uh, Aaron uh, Aaron Limerick, um, mm-hmm. one of the Naughty Dog artists, and you know, like Aaron could easily draw and render and paint all the shots and you know last of us when he was working on it but like you know the reason he's using either 3d or 2d photo bashing is because it's a time saving thing right it's it's production it's no necessity it's just it's the thing he's doing to get the best shot the quickest whereas i think students confuse that so much with i need to learn 3d because if i don't i'm not going to be able to get the same results you probably could get close if you just use traditional results but like yeah those everything's like like you said everything's a tool you know it's like you learn it because it's another uh it, it goes in your tool belt it's something you can pick up and use if you need to you know mm-hmm. like i mean even when you came to naughty dog originally you were you know shady was saying he remember used to, you know him and etan used to look over your shoulder and be like what the fuck are you doing with like, full textures they're exaggerating but yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah but like still like that was such a new concept even then and then people were like and now like you know 3d coat and blender and all those programs if somebody comes into the studio and is like a master at that thing and of course you're like oh, what, what are you doing how are you getting this effect like so quickly and it's it's a thing that will work in production but i think it also depends on where you want to work right if naughty dog is your end goal then sure you need to learn 3d to some extent you'll need to learn photo fashion or some technique that will be able to use photo textures really quickly um if you want to work in an indie studio and draw things by hand then sure drawing and painting are your are your main skill sets you probably won't actually need to touch 3d you know it, it just depends on 
where you want to land eventually, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. It all comes down to how when you're learning tools, like what do you what is the reason to learn them, right? I try to approach everything from a perspective of uh, I'm not learning because it's a it's a hot topic because everyone is learning therefore I should like I never right. I try to avoid looking at uh, approaching the subject that way because it just leads to wasted time in my opinion mm-hmm. um, you know probably the the some of the best artists that I, I admire the most mm-hmm. you know it's kind of funny because like the the best artists that I admire the most, for the most part, use completely outdated software. Like you, right. like, what you're using that? You know, I remember Vitaly using Softimage for modeling. Softimage, <laughs> and you know, and that but was like a few years ago. Odd. Like he gets away with that stuff. Like so, I yeah. Mean, but like... he's an absolute killer when it comes to you know hard surface, and he's using yeah. he was using like the oldest possible software you know you could find. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, not all as possible, but uh, yeah, you know yeah, something yeah. that that was outdated ten years ago. It was like, yeah. "Whoa, you're not using Blender with the new bells and whistles?" Like, no, I'm using something that doesn't doesn't even have one hundredth of uh of the features that Blender has. Wow. But he's just so good at it. Like, he's just yeah, he's yeah. not focusing on tools. He's fo- focusing on how to use tools to make stuff that he wants to make. Right? Yes. And yes. This is the true. This is true to everyone I know that mm-hmm. uses software. They use it to make it as a tool, not as a end all be all. You know. Yeah. So it's the foundation thing, right? It comes back to like right. If, yeah, if exactly. Kelly had to use Max or Maya or whatever the fuck, he could use it, right? He's not going to struggle. He's not going to sit there for like a day and be like, I have no idea what I'm doing. Like he'll he'll figure that out. But then, like people when they let like it's the same when we talked about drawing right if if you have a solid foundation in drawing and painting when it comes to designing something you know using 3d coat using zbrush using whatever it, it, it's just something that is another tool in the belt it's no you know like if if zbrush died tomorrow or like all the software went away like how well would you then you know if, if all you had left was photoshop how well would you do you know what i mean like and right. for a lot of people a lot of people including yourself you'd be like well that's fine i can draw and paint i don't I don't need to use photo textures. Like if I have to use just paint, I can do that. So yeah, like that's the thing that will make you, I think, um, sustainable in the industry, right? Mm -hmm. More future-proof. If you can then say, well, I know how to 3D model. So whatever is the next blender, cool. I can handle that. You know what I mean? Um, So yeah, and yeah, like you said, it's just deciding what type of artist you want to be, right? Yeah, and you look at software, like people are getting excited about the new update that oh this software has this new thing that is just amazing and then mm-hmm. are you going to jump ship just to realize that the software you're in is going to have that same feature a month later you know <laughs> it's yep. like yep. Yep. and here, here here's what comes with the when you when you get the latest and greatest you also get the untested you know meaning the mm. software might be buggy the the drivers might not work that well just yet and yeah. the feature that you're excited about is going to crash and corrupt your project and you're fucked you know yeah. so yeah it's like it's it's a gamble i guess when you're learning those things it's it's one thing but when you're working on the project that's another thing as well you know yeah. i i avoid uh, like i avoid i only use things that i know are like bulletproof for professional yeah. projects because the moment it crashes then i'm yeah. fucked you know like okay yeah, yeah. I, i've wasted so much time to get to get here instead of doing it in the way yeah. where i know it works you know especially in film right you kind of turn around to a director and be like oh you're gonna have to wait a day on me because my project's corrupted it would be like oh well bye <laughs> like you know like if that's if that's i mean like that your, your yeah. stature of course that wouldn't happen but like if you're early on and you're so experimental that like you're holding up production then that's just that's going to be a, a clusterfuck that's something that yeah you know, it's kind of funny with film, the directors and production designers, they don't necessarily give a fuck if you're using the latest, like they don't, even, they don't actually care what, what, yeah. are, you, what are you doing? They only care that you're going to get a result that they need in order to build the set or make the costume or build the VFX. That's all they care about. How yes. it's looking and how you did it. I mean, obviously it has to look good. Um, there has to be, you know, that kind of the baseline, but standard. You know, it's it's funny because like 
I I can I can find a lot more inspiring art on art station than in film industry. But mm. then when I look at the art that is done in the film industry, on the other hand, it's reliable as hell. Like meaning, yeah. they just I just need to do this, and then once it's once it's done, this is exactly serving the purpose that is needed to to be served. Meaning. It mm-hmm. it shows how the environment's laid out. It shows what kind of material is going to be used for mm-hmm. building that prop. They're not going to take your painting and put it behind the actor. They're going to build right. the set, you know? So they need to know how this works in the relationship with, with what the scene's going to be. Because yeah. later on, the DP, the, the, the lighting, all of that's going to be built completely separate from what you did. And sometimes it happens that you know, some of the illustrators do such an amazing job in, in conveying the scene and lighting that is yeah. literally translated to what the scene is going to be like because the the VFX supervisor and the director and and the DP they oh shit it looks awesome let's let's just build it you know because yeah, it's yeah, exactly yeah. how we want it. Mm. Um, but that's not I mean, yeah. if you can get that that's great. But the the mm. the, the reliability part is the, the important one because yeah. If a produ- if you work with a production designer or, or a director, and no matter how good you do, but uh, but they all, but they know for for certain that if they give you something to work on, with the expectation that this is the results that they want to get after, you are always yeah. going to deliver no matter what, right? Yeah. They don't yeah. care if you build it in Unreal or if you build it in Blender or if you use 3ds Max or if you use SketchUp or if you draw on it with pencils, like. Mm-hmm. That doesn't matter. It yeah. matters that you can do what they want you to do. That you mm-hmm. can deliver a very specific thing that they are after, and that's yeah. only that only thing that matters. It's a little different in video games, where I mean, mm-hmm. it's true in video games as well, because like your art is just a a reference at this point. Like what you do yeah. with with your paintings for for your concept art for video games, it's a reference for for. Uh, pretty much hundred other peoples to basically mm. build it, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's the same. I mean, it's, it's true. It's true. It's true as well in in that situation. But yeah, you yeah. Know what I was I mean. going to say, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think again, focus on the the software. I think it's one of these things that, like, if you are so, you know, if you're constantly chasing trends. In five years, the thing you sunk your time into might change again. And then what do you do? Do you switch again? Because, like, I mean, going back to, like, I think I was at an industry workshop, uh, like, 2015, 2016. I think Ash was there that year. But, like, I was speaking to Chris Rosenworth at the time, and, you know, he was doing all the pre-production on, like, I think a Bond film. But he was talking back then about how they were using VR headsets to build and pre-production sets and then put, the like, the headset on the director's head and he could mm-hmm. physically walk about in the set. Now, that was like five, six years ago. So you'll probably find that like even the stuff you're trying to learn now when you walk into films, you know, there's probably stuff you guys are using that are already five years ahead of everybody else. So that's why I'm saying like foundation is so key because, you know, as long as you can paint and draw well, the, the tool set wouldn't mar. Like, uh, you know, Blender's here today. Great. In two years, what's the next thing? And like you said, right. with, with DPs, with, with VDs, those guys are like, you know, they're not interested in what you done the final result in. It's just that you have a result. You know what I mean? Yeah, and software is just software. It's just a tool for you to get things done, and you can learn it. You can learn one or another. Obviously, it's going to take time to readjust if you need to change the software you're using. But right. at the end of the day, it's just a tool, and you have to look at it from a from a point of view as like, okay, am I? Is this tool helping me to get the get the get the work done or it's getting in the way of getting the work done you know yeah yeah so i mean in essence that's what kind of takes me to my next point and looking at showtime which of course congratulations with that landed in august that blew up and it was it was huge it was uh it was incredible man you know i mean you're like a one-man workhorse when it comes to production like i think you know we all had expectations for what you were going to drop but then I think we were all surprised with, you know, when we watched it, I say we, it was like me and five other of my concept buddies. And we were all like <laughs> around the monitor being like, oh, it's, it's nearly cut here. It's, he's going to, he's going to post it. He's going to post it. And uh, we loved it, man. I mean, we were all, you know, Ghost in the Shell fans, Akira fans, of course, you know, back in the days. And I think it's like, you know, is that something that is like the aim eventually? Is that like, 
you're going to want to make your own anime movie, right? Um, That's... I don't know. Like, honestly, the goal was to make a short film, right? Right. And yeah. And that was my initial goal. Like, what what's going to happen after with Showtime? Mm-hmm. It's yet to be decided. Like, this, I, I don't, I, I wasn't particularly attached to the idea that this is going to be this this giant thing that I'll be developing into a feature film or whatever, right? That's That was never the goal. Right. The goal was to prove myself that I can direct and make something happen, like make an animation or, or make a short film that has right. some kind of substance that uh, can be something more than just what I've done so far, which is just concept art and illustration, right? right. So that was the goal, and I, I feel like I achieved it. And... The, well, I mean, obviously, uh, you know, it's it's subjective whether people. I, I feel like from the sub the the feedback I got, people loved it and asked for more. <laughs> so yeah, that's, I, I really appreciate that. Obviously, the, yeah, yeah. the the personal goal is already reached. Meaning, like, what stem out of Showtime already got me a commercial gig that is uh, my like commercial director role. Um. You know the view so i already got that and yeah. what happens next i don't go as far i just you know look at what's the next project that is really inspiring for me personally and then i'm going to pursue that and just gonna make it happen you know um yeah, and yeah, then yeah. whatever tools are needed to be used to make it happen i will learn those and and make make it happen again you know that's yeah. i i just feel like with everything going on, like how much stuff is out there, software wise, hardware wise, and the world moving on, and you know people getting excited about different trends and the frequency of progression, all that stuff. It's like, in order to not get overwhelmed and distracted, you just have to pick something that you're excited about and just go for it. You know. So yeah. I, I I've, I've been looking at at my work pretty much from that lens for past year maybe two years right uh yeah we'll see how it goes yeah is that a thing also that you use uh a lot of eastern influence still in your work i mean like you know you're you're you know you're working these big massive western hollywood budget things but you know like i mean even for me like i still i try to incorporate like my love for eastern you know anime uh, Japanese film, you know, even sitting on a Sunday and watching Kurosawa films, like I just got uh, my cat uh, Katsuya Terada uh, ten out of ten retrospective in today, so I've been browsing through that, you know, and uh, you know, there's a bunch of Japanese artists that you know I love, guys. Some of the original, like Akira and that, and Akira Vosa that worked on, you know, like Street Fighter and stuff that I just, you know, illustration wise, blow me away. Still, is that something that you're still? taking or like i mean is it is it something where you originally like you dived into stuff like ghost in the shell and akira and that was kind of your main point for a lot of the, the, the years and now you've kind of moved away from that or is that something that you still dive into um i don't know like obviously there are some projects that i have in mind that uh cannot answer <laughs> whether it is of course whether yeah. this is true or not yeah, um yeah. you know when i, I mean, was- have you got an active role and and you know sitting in crunchy role and, and and diving into stuff that is maybe the cut? I mean, like like I'm watching stuff like Boku no Hero Academia and stuff like that. You know, like are you still trying to partake that that side of anime and uh, Japanese animation? Is that something that's still involved in your life? Um, you know, I you mentioned Akira and Ghost in the Shell. Those, those are those are like the two sort of like tentpole, uh, yeah. sort of like a cornerstone co- cornerstone animes that basically changed my perspective on what what's possible and what art is you know when i was yes. i grew up watching those and i was always inspired and for me they were always like the sort of like the, the pinnacle of this is this is what anime is supposed to be in my opinion and uh and there is a lot and, and so one of the reasons why i would what i made showtime uh sh- short was to sort of like prove a point that you can go back in time and refresh sort of the the visuals towards the modern look without going expressively too far into that direction of like completely 3d or you know right 
I guess maintaining the the artistry of how those those movies were made back then. Because when you yeah. look at the work uh, working uh, the the behind the scenes of those projects, it's absolutely yeah. insane how they made them. You know, the amount of work that went into that. I don't think there's any other anime these days that are made in the same with the same love and passion than those those that were made back then. Uh, and there's only a few, you know, like you could you could only count a few. You, you would probably run out of ideas of of, of like absolute masterpieces of a- animation uh, in, in 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 the palm of your hand when it comes back, like looking back in time, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so so that's sort of like the quality that I I, I admire, and I'm not mm-hmm. personally attached that this has to be anime or or film or or anything else. It's just the sort of like the attention to detail, you know, like when you pause, you know, one of the inter- one of the most interesting, um, one of the most interesting exercises you can do is watch uh, Ghost in the Shell or Akira and pause, and then just like break down to see what you see, and you, there's just so many times where I would watch Ghost in the Shell and pause in like a moment. Uh, and and look at the the screen and try to observe what's there. And I was like, holy fuck! There's so much detail that you miss out. It's like yeah. it's there. It's it it's adding the fidelity, but it's so such a subtle thing that you don't even pay attention to. But if you take it away, you will notice. You know. Yeah. And um, I like to do an exercise like that when I pause and and look and observe and. Yes. And get like, holy crap! There's just so much art- artistry that goes into, and it applies to everything: to animation, to film, to illustration, to you know, sound design, like all of those things. You know, you learn that. You know, there's something about the love and artistry about making things like absolutely the most beautiful you can, without cutting corners and like, oh, this is good enough. Let's move on. You know. Because I had that with 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 uh, with Showtime as well. Like I would have so many moments where I was just like, oh, "It's good. It's good enough. It's good enough. Yeah. I can move on." And yeah. I was just like, kick kick myself in the butt and say, "Like, no, it's not good enough." Because like once you finish and it's done, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. you're gonna regret that you haven't done. You, you're gonna be pissed that you haven't finished it or you haven't added that extra extra juice to it. You know. Yeah, and obviously, yeah, yeah. you can go forever. Like I look at yeah, my yeah. my animation back now, and it's like oh, crap. Mm-hmm. Like I wish I did this this this, this completely differently. Of course, yeah, yeah. But yeah. that's in the hindsight. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, like I was like even going back to guys like Miyamoto and Nintendo. I mean, they, I think he's famously quoted as saying, "You know, uh, a rush game is bad, but a delayed game is eventually good." So, like you know, right. if you if you try to push something out quickly just because you're like, I need, I need it just to come out. Like, you know, you'll probably have people still going, wow, but maybe no, like, oh my God, wow. You know, like, mm-hmm. I think that's where Showtime crossed the line. You know, even, I can't tell you how many documentaries uh, I've watched on, you know, Ghibli movies getting made. And, um, you know, the the level that goes into even just the the... the the hand animated stuff, you know, this, the individual cells, the, you know, how some of their movies would take years and years and would never come out because they just were never happy with them. And, and again, that's, that's different though. That's like, that's the Japanese right. standard as well. That's the way they work is like, everything has to be perfect. It has to be to the finest and smallest detail. It has to be perfection. So, um, I think any level of that in your work is great because obviously you want to show your best side in everything you do. Um, you know, you don't want to put out something that's attached to your name and it's like it's mediocre because then forever it will live as a mediocre product thing, you know. Yeah. You tear your hair out. So yeah, I think it's like I think the reason I keep my, my eyes and my ears to the Japanese floor of animation and film, you know, even a lot of their, you know, you look at a lot of their animes now, they're actually using more and more 3D because it's a production thing where it saves a lot of time, right? Um, yeah, of like, course. Like I think Demon Slayer is one of the biggest uh, grossing movies over there just now uh, and series. And uh, most of the characters and environments are done in 3D because it's so quickly, you know, they can you can push that stuff out so quickly, but also it's so high fidelity. And uh, I think keeping that in the loop when you're making stuff is that, you know, because I, I think... I think the biggest growth I have when I'm an artist is looking for people outside the industry, looking for people that 
aren't involved in concept art and games and you know call of duty and whatever you know there's some guys i love who are like they're just illustrators that are in some small town down in england but their craft and their hone is so you know specific and amazing and you know they're just illustrators they're just painters they aren't involved in the industry they have a unique perspective that i think is great to have Mm -hmm. in the work you do um i think if you continuously focus on like you know or who worked in the latest call of duty or who worked in the last of us I and mean, those guys are great in their own respect but i think when the more you look outside of that the quicker you grow as an individual yeah for sure yeah 100 percent. uh okay so I, I think that's a good place to to wrap it uh Mathieu. i think I've, I've kept you for long enough um <laughs> I mean, like you. I mean, when you get involved in talking about it, right, you could be here forever. Just you know, yeah. Talking. There's a lot of subjects we we touched upon that, by its own, could be you know their Whole own podcast. episodes. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Um, but yeah, it was it was great. And again, just thanks for coming on and and giving up your time. Um, I'm extremely grateful for uh you know the hour i got with you i think it's it's um i definitely know people will enjoy it. i mean i have you know so i think if, if i'm enjoying <laughs> it everybody who will, will listen to it will will really enjoy it and, yeah we'll see uh, by comments <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, wait joking. for the trolls to hit but nah, i appreciate sure. for the invite though nobody fucking listens to this podcast anyway so it's fine so <laughs> <laughs> that's all good yeah, yeah um cool so uh so you know where can people find you or where should we be looking to to see your stuff what are you doing these days um my website kuchara.com my instagram my machi kuchara which is mm-hmm. you know my first and last name those are yeah. the primary places obviously i have my own podcast you funny you mentioned like nobody listens to it it's like yeah like yeah. when i started nobody was listening to mine either so <laughs> yeah i know <laughs> it so takes it's, forever it's no nah, man I, even just like occasionally getting i remember i got an email i think a couple of months ago and somebody was like um you inspired me so much with you know having the courage to leave your job i've just i've turned 30 i've just left my steel working job to go back to university and be an artist and i was like the tears were running in my face as i was reading the email i was like oh my god <laughs> oh, so incredible so like yeah I, those I those emails are great um yeah I, i've always said if like one person is listening and they enjoy it then you know job done so but i was actually really surprised yeah. like last year going to light box and like you know i was helping raf of his table and like every second person was like i know your name your your voice from somewhere and like oh digital art cast i love you and i was like what the <laughs> fuck <laughs> you're kidding me like, you're out here in la you know my name and yeah it's it's freaky man but uh yeah you do it for the love you don't do these things for any cash or anything or anything else because uh yeah, I mean, well, there is no money in it, but yeah, like it's, it's as long as you feel like you're helping somebody. Um, I there is money in it. It's just you have to hustle a lot and eventually get yeah, there, yeah. you know. But yeah, it's it's yeah. a it's a completely different subject. For yeah, yeah. I yeah. this is something I you know, it has to be. It's almost like a job. Like it has to become your job where you yeah. just treat it in a way. And there are a lot of podcasts that do really well financially because they just become yeah. big enough to garnish the yeah. the sponsors you know uh, of that, or you know you use a podcast to push your own you know merchandise and whatnot or lessons or whatever you know there's 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 ways of monetizing those things but overall yeah generally speaking uh you don't start from the from the idea of like i'm gonna be rich by making rich, an art yeah, podcast yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, still, I'm still waiting for rage shadow legends to hit me up like i'm just waiting for that email to drop every day now like just <laughs> <laughs> um yeah cool okay so uh so yeah thanks again to Mathieu for coming on if you guys have any questions or want to add any comments down below i'm sure um we'll check them out at one point i'll leave all his social media and links below you can check him out at various places um also check out learn squared which which is as part of and the founder of that you guys can learn online some really great resources yeah, there absolutely best um, place to learn yeah yes the best <laughs> fuck everything else it's so good um <laughs> yeah man and uh and just spam his inbox it's cool um yeah that and then of course uh there's also art, art cafe which he has his own podcast where he has guests as well and speaks to people from the industry so check that out as well again i'll leave it in the link below um if you're watching us on youtube that's great but we also are on spotify uh stitcher google Podcasts, itunes all that kind of stuff and uh yeah likes comments shares it always helps the podcast um i think we're nearly at 3k uh, I pray to God when Mache shares it that we get somewhere close to that. That would be great. That would be a nice Christmas present for me if I've got a couple more subscribers. <laughs> um, but yeah, man, indeed. Thanks again for listening, guys. And thanks, Mache. And uh, we'll see you guys later. Yeah, I appreciate having me. Thanks, guys. Yes, indeed. Bye. <laughs>